This is Conrad Nagel inviting you to stay tuned for the next half hour for one of radio's outstanding dramatic productions on Proudly We Hail. Proudly We Hail. And now another Proudly We Hail. One of radio's outstanding dramatic half-hours, transcribed coast to coast in cooperation with this station and presented by your Army and your Air Force. From Radio City, New York, here is your host and star on Proudly We Hail, the distinguished star of the theater, screen, radio, and television, Conrad Nagel. Thank you, Kenneth Banghart. Hello, everyone. Welcome again to Proudly We Hail. The Spanish Main in the days of Sir Francis Drake, eh, Conrad? That's right, Ken, for a thrilling story of the sea and the men who sailed on ships in the time of Queen Elizabeth. Our play is entitled Hue and Cry. We'll be ready for our first act in a few moments after this very important message. You young men of America know that the United States Army has been expanding. However, that expansion must continue, and your help is needed. It's needed right now. If you have initiative, courage, and leadership ability... Visit your local United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station and enlist in the United States Army today. And now with your star, Conrad Nagel, in the role of Captain Guy Marlowe, your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, Hue and Cry. In the year 1588, Philip II sat on the throne of Spain. Spain was strong, proud, vast, her wealth immeasurable. But Spain had a sharp thorn in her side, a thorn called England. How dared this dreary little island, inhabited by madmen and ruled by a whey-faced old witch, presume upon the might and glory of an empire without peer? Grandees at Philip's court fingered their blades restlessly and swore in their beards at the indecision of their king. The thorn must be plucked out and ground underfoot. The honor of Spain was at stake. And although they didn't care to admit it, so was the future. Invade England, that was the thing. Build a fleet, an armada, the like of which had never been seen. Crush this island of heretics and sweep clean the seas once and for all. Pick up the stroke, you sons of the devil! Bigger! Give them something to pull for! Pull, pigs! Yes, to get me hands on his spiritual throat. Heave to, Digby. Heave to, is it, Captain? I'll take this bloody great all right. Hey, all this holy shut your jaw and roll. That's my order. Big pardon, sir. Just don't pull too hard. What beasts we are. Must be 200 of us in this stinking old breaking our backs. I you dogs. Pick up this throat. I have to breeze it only come up all day and Keep all still and pray that the breeze... Freshens not. Easy, Captain. Wipe us down here, twist a man's more. The later we make port, the better, Digby. In the dark, all men are weary. There might be a chance. Now say no more, or the lash will talk to us. Under you will call this night, Carrion. Miguel, use that cat. Pick it up. Pick up the stroke. <laughs> Be quick with those chains. When the chain is passed along, run it under the loop, not through it. Sir, they'll see. They're in a hurry. Men in a hurry are often careless. It's a chance, the first since our capture. These rags with an iron bolt on the ankle, what good are to... death, Digby, do as I say or do or not at all. It matters not to me, God willing. I leave here this night. Ah, Miguel, you have the first watch. Santos will relieve you. Oh, finish it yourselves. I'm weary, and the smell of these barbarian ones will choke an axe. Quiet! Quiet! I said you'd go hungry this night, and hungry you'll go. And if my voice does not silence you, I warrant you, Miguel's cat will. <laughs> I bid you, gentlemen, a pleasant good night. His divine and gracious majesty bids you welcome 
to Spain. It worked, Captain. So help me, they never looked twice. Yes, yes. And getting off this bench and past the two men who are next to me will be a simple task. They know what we've done and they'll make no sound. But then what, Captain? McGill must be dispatched without a sound. You'll remain here while I tend to it. Celebrating. Yeah. Even the Spanish air fills the lungs sweetly. Oh, and on so dark a night as well. One of the watchers just after that covering kept. Yes, yes, he appears not too watchful. I'll put an end to his watching. Here, take McGill's knife. <laughs> yourself slowly if you drop the water and that leg iron i doubt if you'd come up pot fish i am captain and so so we take possession of spain i I ain't never seen a harbor so full of ships in all my days. Yes, and from the looks, a goodly number under construction. But right now we've more important things to do than count ships. It won't be long before they discover McGill and raise the cry. Shouldn't be too hard to find us the way we look. So we'll change our looks as quickly as we can. But first a blacksmith's shop to rid ourselves of these irons. We're in luck, Captain. It's a blacksmith shop, right enough. Yes, and how to find a way in without waking the neighborhood and bringing the watch down on our necks. That window there, I can break it gently. Ah. There are no living quarters above. That means the blacksmith either sleeps in his shop or elsewhere. It is a flimsy enough looking place. Yeah, there must be sudden activity on the quayside. Try the window. And if the cry is raised, back into the water. <laughs> Quiet, quiet. My knife goes in your throat if you make one sound. Now, are you the blacksmith? Madre de Dios, I'm a poor man. I have done no harm. Silence. Answer my question. I, I, I am Pedro, senor, the blacksmith's helper. He is not here. Get up, get up quickly. We work for you. Digby, get those bellows going. Come, come, man. Can't you work any faster? I, I, I am doing my best. It... It is difficult. I could do it quicker, Captain. I know, I know. Just keep that dirt in his back. Faster, you sub a blubber. Por el amor de Dios, I shall be torn in from limb for this. I shall be drawn and quartered, burned at the stake, boiled in You please. shall presently be found dead and forego the pleasure of such refinement if you don't hurry. Oh, I feel ten stone lighter with that bleeding neck of metal. Huck, huck. What is it? What is it, blacksmith? Speak true please, senor, or I'll... Please, senor, it is the watch. They are searching the houses. They will come here and... Quiet, quiet. You will do just as I say. Digby, throw those irons into that pile of junk. Quench the fire. There must be no light. Oh, sir. Now, listen, you. Try and stop shaking long enough to listen to me. Your life depends on it. Blacksmith, open it and remember. What is the trouble? What is going on? Have you seen two galley slaves, fool? One tall and dark with him. I am only a poor blacksmith's helper. I have seen nothing, no one. Please let me sleep in peace. Why are your teeth chattering? The, 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 the night air, it is bad. Evil spirits ride on the wind. I have seen nothing. Uh, go away, please. Two escaped galley slaves might well come to a blacksmith's shop. Could not travel far with irons on their... If there is one, there are 50 such shops along the waterfront. Please, Captain, search here, then go look in the others. I do not lie. By my patron saint, I do not Stop lie. Stop sniveling. All right, men, move on. We have much ground to cover. Oh, oh, oh. 
I have done an unpardonable thing. I have committed a great sin. Yes, and you're alive. <laughs> yeah, you were magnificent, oh, no, Pedro. No, 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 you no. even had me convinced. I shall never be forgiven. I shall roast it. Make, make that gag good and tight, Digby. He'll oh. sing like a bird when the time comes. I'll breathe easier once we're clear of this place. Blowed if I will. Before dawn, we've got to find decent clothes. Don't tarry, man. Trust him up and let's be about our business. <laughs> Chills in the air, Captain. Yes, yes, I can feel it, Digby. Have no fear. Do we remain in this alleyway? Until the first light. If we have no luck, we'll spend the day under the docks, bad cess to it. Boy, dear hunger gnaws at me belly. Ah, those roisterers will have to leave that tavern soon. Or stay the night. I think not. They... Hold! Look! Look there! A cherub and fair winds at last. Gentlemen from their dress and well mellowed. They wear good blades. Which will give them no chance to use. Stand easy now. You take the one nearest. Let them pass. And then strike. Queen and country, eh, Captain? No, Digby. You look like a person grandee, Captain, with your black beard and them clothes. <laughs> yeah, luck has favored us this night, Digby, but there's a long road ahead. From now on, I am Don Jose Alvaro y Philip Santayana. Well, that's a mouthful, Captain. To you, I'm Don Jose. You're Sebastian, my valet. Speak only when it is necessary. Your Spanish, if you'll excuse me, is none too good. Horrible language, sir. Yeah, we must find an inn close to the waterfront. I shall play the part of a man who has taken much to drink. This hour, there should be few questions. But we must be up and away at daybreak. Oh, sir. When those two wretches are found, the hue and cry will sound even louder. If we don't find a ship at least on the morning tide, we shall have to find horses and get out of this city. And it won't be easy in broad daylight. You time, tell me nothing I'm not aware Hold of. Hold there! Halt! Run for it. Stand where you are. I'll handle this. Eh? Who calls? Who bids me halt? Eh? Who are you? What do you do at this hour? Who am I? <laughs> now, of all the infernal insolence. Listen, dog, what I do is my own business. And take that stinking torch out of my face before I lose my patience and run you through. I, I'm sorry, senor. We are searching for two English heretics who escaped from the Santa Clara this night. They are How to... dare you bother me with your troubles? Do I look like an escaped prisoner, eh? Oh, no, 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 senor. Who is your captain? Please, senor. We only wanted to ask you if you'd seen two suspicious looking... Now, by the saints, am I supposed to ferret out your galley slaves? Had I seen them, this blade would have dripped red. Now be gone. Out of my way, all of you. <laughs> Come, Sebastian. <laughs> Conrad Nagel, starring in the role of Captain Guy Marlow in the proudly we hail production Hue and Cry, will return in just a moment for the second act. Here's a special message for the young men of our country. The United States Army, the senior service of our armed forces, is expanding rapidly and needs your help. By enlisting in the United States Army, you will not only get the finest training in the world, but you'll have the special pride that goes with wearing a United States Army uniform, the mark of a man. If you have the qualifications, the Army will train you in such interesting career fields as radio, radar, electronics, mechanics, meteorology, and many others. Why not get full details today by visiting your local United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. Enlist now. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now with your star, Conrad Nagel, in the role of Captain Guy Marlowe, we present the second act of Hue and Cry. <laughs> She's the tall one out there, Digby, the galleon. She's the only one, sir? Yes, bound for Panama. What about all these others? Don't they go anywhere? We haven't time to find out or to wait to take our pick. Get a boarder, we must. Oh, there, boy. Uh, this for you, if you take us out to the galleon. <laughs> So, Captain Andorra, that's my sad tale. 
She was lovely, and her husband was not only a jealous fool, but a poor swordsman as well. But uh, not without influence. Alas, no. <laughs> That's why you see me here at this hour. Uh, you came without luggage, Don Jose. I trust you were not so forgetful about money. Whatever you ask within reason, I shall pay. And if it is not within reason? Well, I killed a man yesterday. I can repeat myself today. And feed the fishes. As God wills. <laughs> I misjudged you, Don Jose. You seemed, uh, well, if you will pardon me, more like an adulpated fool than a man of steel. <laughs> As long as no one presumes upon my good nature, Captain Andorra, I am, as you so aptly put it, an advocated <laughs> fool. You do not deceive me, Don Jose. I shall not presume upon your uh, uh, good nature. Hey, come, shall we drink to a safe voyage and a quick one? By all means, sir, by all means. Come. Ah, there you are, Lady Mary. Hey. You have found your sea leg? I must confess they're still somewhat wobbly. <laughs> I beg your pardon, Don Jose. Allow me to present Lady Joanna Merrill, a fellow passenger. Like you, she goes to Panama in haste. Madame, Don Jose Alvaro y Filippo Santayam. Well, pleasant surprise, my lady. I find no pleasure in it, sir. You must excuse her, Don Jose. She is English. Lovely to look upon, but with a tongue like an ass. <laughs> Very cold. <laughs> she likes us not? She hates the lot of you. Kidnappers, pirates, and devils. I have orders to deliver her to the governor of Panama. He, uh... yeah, he'll have his hands full. How came he to know such a rare pearl? It is a long tale, and I am hungry. Madame, will you do us the honor of dining? It will be no honor, I assure you. Eat I must, even with swine. <laughs> In Castile, my lady, we know how to tame such women as yourself. With a whip, no doubt. And if that doesn't work, we remove the source of the trouble and cut out their tongue. It is exactly what I would expect. <laughs> Try some of this, Madeira, madam. It will cool you. If I only were a man. Oh, it would be such a sad waste of beauty. And you would be feeding the fishes or pulling an oar in a galley. Or rotting in some prison cell. When my father hears of this, you'll rule the day, I warrant. Drake's men will come again and level your cities. He'll burn your fleet, as he did at Cadiz. And then he'll sail to Panama and rescue you from the evil clutches of its noble governor. <laughs> uh, come, Lady Merrill, try some of this duck. Drake and all these sea wolves will dance at the yard arm soon enough. When the armada sails, we shall crush your barbaric little island once and for all. Did you not notice the fleet in the harbor, Lady Merrill? It is but a small part of a great undertaking. Ah, we shall sweep down on your England and crush her like that. You look stricken, Don Jose. Is something is wrong? 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 <laughs> No, no, but uh, is it well to talk so in public? You know, few are aware. Uh, of have you. no fear. She will speak to no one but the governor of Panama. It's a long voyage, Captain. And I'll wager between here and the Indies you'll find more than one English ship. Ah, but we are at peace with England. So I thought, until your friendly ship came alongside the unarmed merchantman we sailed on and blew her out of the water. Pirate! <laughs> Oh, so it is taming you want. Well, I tame you for wait, the governor. Wait, wait, Andorra. Let go of me, Don Jose. I have no quarrel with you, but with but, this... But you'd rather face the Inquisition, is that it? She's the governor's. And you'd best keep your hands off. Uh, all right. All right. Madam, you will do us the favor of going to your cabin. You will remain there until I give further orders. Now, be gone. Who goes? A friend. Unbar the door, quickly. Go away or I'll call for help. Lady Merrill, I am help. Must I speak English to prove it? English? Wait. Don Jose! How, how 
Stand be still, be still. Let me go. Let... Look, look. I am Don Jose. Nothing. It is but a disguise. I am Captain Guy Marlowe of Devon, one of Drake's men. There's no time to explain. You must trust me. Ca Captain Marlowe of Drake? At your service, my lady. For your own safety, we must leave this ship at once. Andorra's drunk and ugly. My reasoning can hold you no longer. How came you here, Lady Merrill? I was in France visiting my sister and her husband. While there, this new Spanish governor of Panama happened to see me. Our ship was three days out of Bordeaux when it was seized and sunk. Without provocation, it was cold-blooded murder. Well, I was brought to Cadiz. You know the rest. Sir. Yes, I see. How, how can we leave the ship, Captain Marlowe? We cannot swim the ocean. My man Digby has been stocking the pins with the necessary supplies. We have but to get it over the side. How can that be done without attracting the attention of the crew? The captain will help us. Are you mad, sir? I trust not, my lady, but he is. And if I'm any judge, he'll be joining us shortly. Open the door, wench, or I will call my men to break it in. <laughs> I would have words with you. Unbar it. Unbar it and stand to one side. When he enters, slam it shut and then keep clear. Well, <laughs> well, that is better. I thought I... Don Jose, what deviltry is this? How came you here? I was sent to protect her ladyship. Huh? Draw your sword while I give you a lesson in manners. So, a spy, huh? So be it. I will make shark meat of you, you, you fool. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. No. You're going to take a trip, Captain. Oh. Yeah, your guard is low, but not to Panama. Uh. Yeah, a lunge in the cart. You're slow, Captain. A <laughs> trip to England to clear your head. No. Ah. Enough of ah. this. No, no. Do not try to pick it up. Huh? My lady, take the pistol from his belt. One false breath and it'll be your last, Andorra. Uh, are you mad? If Englishmen are mad, yes. What? Quietly. Thank you, my lady. It would give me great pleasure to blow your head off. Whether I do or not is up to you. We're going on deck now, the three of us. You're going to give the watch orders to put the pendants over the side. You cannot get away with this! If I don't, you die. You'll give these orders quietly. No alarm will be given. My lady will proceed us. Digby is at the end of the passage, waiting. Do as he tells you. Now... You may unbar the door. Turn around, Andorra. We're going for a sail. Tell them to look lively, Andorra. Be quick! Be quick! All clear, Digby? I don't think stern falls, Captain. They sleep sound. Tell those men to go stand by the mizzen. Have your helmsman head up a point. Do as he says. Over the side, Digby. The captain will follow you. If he acts up, give him the butt of your pistol. That I will, sir. You, you cannot take me from my ship. I... Silence. Oh, no. Over the side with you. You men there, follow us, and your captain dies. Kill me, then. I will not leave my ship. As you wish. No, 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 no. I, I will do as you say. Good. Clear below, Digby? Send him down, sir. My lady... I'm sure you've never swung down a hawser. If you don't mind the inconvenience, put your arm around my neck. We'll go down together. I'm yours to command, Captain Marlowe. The inconvenience will be worth the result. And how is it with you, my lady? Well enough. I can never thank you. Well, when we reach England. You will I... never reach England. Food and water are nearly gone. We will rot out here. Belay. Another day and we'll reach the coast of France. Have no fear, my lady. I have none. Is, is that a sail or do my eyes play tricks in this light? Yes. Yes, it is a sail right enough. A Spanish sail. You will not be able to prevent them from picking us up. And when they do... When they do, Andorra, you'll not be with us to tell your tale. What, what, what mean you? It should be clear. If that's a Spanish ship... It'll go hard enough with us without you to babble. 
You'd better pray she's English or French. Or just say your prayers. I can't see a forepeak yet, Captain. But from the slant of a rig and I make her out to be Dutch. Yes. Yes, so she looks. Put your helm over, Digby. And we'll trust to good fortune. Death, Marlowe, a lusty time of it you've had. <laughs> Luck was with us, Sir Francis. So they build an armada to come against us. Other reports have come to me and to the Queen. They did not take lightly our burning their fleet at Cadiz. They would return the favor. They would invade England, sir. <laughs> they would try. They do not learn easily. What happened to this, uh, this Captain Andorra? He asked for asylum, and the Dutch gave it to him. They had no other choice. They're not at war with Spain. Ah, uh, bad cess to him. And what of Lady Merrill? She, uh... Well, she's well, sir. <laughs> and grateful to you, Marlowe. I believe so, Sir Francis. Ah, you're a very lucky fellow indeed. Well, when you see her next, give her my regards. I'll do that, sir. And when you've had your rest, come to me here. I'll have need of you. When Philip sends his armada, we must be ready to send it back to him. In pieces. <laughs> Our star, Conrad Nagel, will return in just a moment with a word about next week's show. Next time you see a soldier of your United States Army, take a good look at the uniform he wears. That uniform is the mark of a man. It's always been so. From the buff and blue uniforms of General Washington's Continentals to the battle-worn uniforms of the combat soldiers of today, the United States Army insignia has been worn proudly by many generations of men. The man who wears this uniform needs help. The help of all young Americans who can measure up to the mark of a man. Join him now. Go to your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station and list today. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station by the United States Army and the United States Air Force Recruiting Service. Proudly We Hail stars Conrad Nagel. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking, and here again is your host and star, Conrad Nagel. Friends, we hope you join us next week for Proudly We Hail over this same station. Our play is a tale of thrilling mystery entitled Fair Warning, and you'll meet some frightened people in a story of a chase in a big city. Until then, goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.